Now that we have created our input sliders, the next step is to create our points distribution grid. In order to do this, we want to right click and search for point dot by Cartesian coordinates and add this node to the workspace. This node will have four input variables associated with it, a CS, which stands for coordinate system, and then X, Y, and Z variable inputs. The reason that we use a point dot by Cartesian coordinates node is that for later on, during our optioneering study, we need to redefine the coordinate system associated with our points. Currently, it is simply set to the 000, 000 point of the Dynamo workspace, and we can leave it as thus. If we added a single number into our x, y, and z inputs, we would have a single point appearing at those Cartesian coordinates. So what we need to do in order to create our points distribution grid is to create a number range. To do this, we have two different options. We can either use design script, which is simpler, cleaner, and more efficient, or we can use a node-based workflow. And I'm going to showcase to you both, starting with the design script option. To start with the design script option, we need to execute our code within a code block. So if we use the left mouse button and double click twice in the canvas, it will bring up a code block. In here, we can execute code based around the design script platform. It uses a particular syntax and particular nomenclature to achieve the desired result. And for a number range, it is as follows. We need to have x as a variable, dot dot y as a variable, dot dot, hashtag z as a variable. And we round out our code with a semicolon. What this means is that we just do a number range starting from x, ranging to y, with a total number evenly distributed of z. However, what we want to do is redefine a number grid that has the center point of our table as the center point. Therefore, we want to have half of our table width slash length negatively ranging to half of our table width slash length positively with a total amount defined by the previous slider we have created. To do this, we'll change our x variable to negative size divided by two We'll change our y variable to just size divided by two, and we'll change our z variable to amount. What this means is we have integrated mathematics within our code block, as well as the number range being there by default. And so if we add table width slash length into the size input, and we add amount into the amount input, our code block will change to gray, which means it's now executing properly because it has all of the variables associated and we will have a number range created from negative half our table width slash length, which is negative 300, to positive half of our table width slash length, which is positive 300, with a total number of 8, ranging from 0 to 7 in the indexing method native to Dynamo. We can simply plug the output now of our code block into both our x and our y, of our point dot by Cartesian coordinates node, and you'll notice in the background that we now have points added to our workspace. However, we only have a single line of points added to our workspace, so what we need to do is change the lacing on our point dot by Cartesian coordinates node. To do this, we will right click on the node, go down to the lacing options, and change our lacing from shortest to cross product. This will now define in the background a points distribution grid. If we navigate to our background preview, we can relocate and zoom out to get a better understanding and feel of how our points distribution grid is spread out. What you'll notice is that the coordinate system in the background is centered around our points distribution grid, and this is because we're ranging from negative half of our table width slash length to positive half of our table width slash length in both the x and the y axes. What we'll want to do next is simply add in a z variable that is the same across all of our table, all of our points, to make sure that the table height is accurate. To use this, we'll simply add table height into the Z to change our points distribution from where it was to 600 units higher. This is the easy option using Design Script. We'll showcase how to use the node based version. However, inherently, with the way that we approach this in using mathematics, there are some rounding errors that creep in, and it is not as accurate as it should be. However, to achieve this, what we want to do is create a number range. So by right-clicking in the background, we can search for range and add this node to the workspace. 
For a number range, we need to have a start, an end, and a step. The start is easy. The start needs to be negative half of our table width slash length. So to achieve this, we need to use a multiplication node and a divider node to get what we want. By right clicking once again and adding backslash, which is the symbol for divide, adding a divider node to our canvas, right clicking and using asterisk, which is the symbol for multiplication and adding this to our canvas, we can now using some simple math operations achieve the desired result. If we plug our table width slash length into the x variable input of our divider node, and we change our output of our divider node into the x variable input of our multiplication node, we need to now add some numbers to do the mathematical operations we desire. If we right click in the canvas once again and search for number and add a number node to the canvas, we can add this into our y change the variable input from 0 to 2 and we can add another number slider by using control C and control V or copy and paste change this one to negative 1 and add this into our multiplication node so what we're doing now is simply dividing our table width slash length by 2 to get 300 which becomes our end of our number range, and then we're timesing that number by negative 1 to make it into a negative number, which is negative 300 that defines the start of our number range. The final step we have in this process is step. Now if we simply added an amount to the step, we would have a number range simply incrementing by 8, which is our defined variable for our amount every single time, which is not entirely what we're after. It'll range from negative 300 to negative 292 to negative 284 and so on. What we need to do is add in one final step to this process and this is where the rounding errors really creep in. So if we copy and paste our divider node, we leave the x variable input as table width slash length and change our amount variable input into the y, you'll notice now that we have a step which is simply a divider of table width slash length divided by the amount. If we plug this into step, we'll now have a number range that is more accurate as to what we desire. We now have nine variables ranging from negative 300 to positive 300. You'll notice that this is actually slightly different to the way that we've approached design script where we have only eight variables which actually matches our amount. And this is where the number range becomes problematic because if we wanted to add in a negative one to take our amount count, down to 9, Dynamo starts behaving erratically. However, both approaches are valid. I just prefer to use the design script option because I know that it works and functions in the way that I desire every single time. Now that we have created both of these workflows, we will select the node-based version, right-click and use Create Group. We will use the right-click menu to clean up the node layout change our color to blue, our font size to 24, and call this group number range nodal version. We will also create a group around our design script input, and I will use the shortcut of control G to create this. Right click, change the number to blue, change the font size again to 24 for clarity, and change this to number range, design script version.